Love the game I play, I'm twisting Mike Lowry, Pitbull with the big thing Oh, we out in control This party started Now, 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 now It's time to get this party started Hey, you're listening to Sweet to the Soul This is KD, you know me, the one and only Here in the station at MVL Radio In Purchase, New York and today, you were, just, you were just listening to Rakim and Eric B, The Microphone Fiend. If you don't know that song, you need to really know hip-hop, especially if you're going to listen to NBO Radio here in New York. So tonight, we have a very, very special guest. We have Mr. Joe Paul in the station. What up, what up? Yes. New York, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Joe Paul, for coming in today Thanks in the for studio. having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so first of all, Joe Paul, he's such an interesting guy. Very interesting artist, very unique in his own unique style. And we're going to get more into Joe Paul, his artistry, what he means as an artist, especially as a pop artist. And also, too, touch more into his work that he has. Time of My Life is the number, the album that you're promoting right now. Absolutely. Out now, iTunes, Spotify, Xbox Music, the whole bunch. Anywhere where digital music is sold, if you like shaking your ass... Am I allowed to say that on the You're not allowed, but we're going to... If you're, if you're shaking your assistant moneymaker, <laughs> that's what I meant to say. I got caught up in my words. Um, then, that's the, then that's the album for you. You know what? I wish you guys can see Joe Parr now. He has these sunglasses on. Just swag down. Okay, but you know, we're going to get back into... I'm chilling. I'm here with you. <laughs> it's, it's so hot in here with you that I got to the, wear these shades. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So right now you're listening to Party Started. <laughs> that piano is very great. Joe I Paul. literally do that in my car <laughs> as I'm listening to it, and people looking at me, and I'm like, I'm air piano playing right now. Just leave me alone. I'm in my own world. I'm ha Please excuse me. I'm just having the time of my life now. That's that's what's up. And you know what? Like you said, you all, you're always having the time of your life with your producer and everyone, and in your music, it shows it. Now, I want to know. Let's talk about where I know that you've been writing music ever since you was a child. What made you interested in being a rapper, being an artist, and writing music? What sparked that? I mean, I guess um, uh, my mother would say that you know that I've always wanted to be the center of attention, and uh, <laughs> you know, and I I want to be the one in the the center of the crowded room, and yeah. everyone like, look at me, look at me, look at me. But um, really, it was from you know being able to put these creative lyrics or you know at the time it was poems you know on paper and being able to take some of these you know uh, beats that were popular at the time and put them two together people just started taking notice and it just felt that the next casual step would be to actually try to make a song out of it and wow. I mean I've always been passionate about music I was always a dancer so um, the um, the natural progression of an entertainer, you know, is to, you know, try his hand at different forms of entertainment. So it was either become a DJ, which I mean, I, I could DJ and I've, I've done that. Okay. Uh, or become an MC. So, and back then, it, you know, it was like, you know, who's the baddest, you know, out yeah. there. And, um, so, but I like to make people dance. I like to make people think, and I like to make people dance. So it's like, while you're actually, you know, dancing to this, you know, song that I do, you'll be like, oh, wow, that was a really creative way he said that. And like, exactly. you, and this way you'll remember it, and hopefully you'll go onto iTunes and you buy it. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, yeah, so, so that's really how it is. Okay, and so, like you've said before, you are a hip hop artist, but also too your music. You're like a pop artist, really. Yeah. You really you you started in hip hop, and then now you're more of a pop artist that's making dance music, getting people moving. Exactly. I mean, like uh, like all music, um, everything is an uh, uh, is an evolution, and everything you know goes into a, a period where it can transform and metamorphosize and grow. You know, with you know the times. So it's like. It just seemed, you know, natural that these creative hip hop lyrics that I was doing um, just matched what Dom Juan from uh, Dom Juan Entertainment, you know, right. discovered, and he was like, "Yo, you need to be, you know, doing this and make people, you know, you know, shake their booty all over the place, you know, and <laughs> exactly, you know, you know, it's like, let's get this." So it was a, uh, it was a natural, you know, evolution from, from uh, hip hop to pop, you know, and sort of carving out our own little niche because it's. It's very unique. I mean, I, I, I'm sure there's a couple people that are really trying to do it, you know, uh, across the country, and I salute everybody trying to do music. This, is, but this is my time to shine. So this is what I'm doing. Your music, okay. So first of all, your singles, your records right now, 
not only are they pop, but they're very mainstream. I really see these in the mainstream area, not so much just in just one genre. I feel it. Like you reach everyone with your music. We're certainly trying to. We like to hit every every angle of the spectrum and make timeless records that right. you know, everyone can appreciate. And, you know, from your little brother and sister, you know, dancing right. dancing in their diapers, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, on, you know, the kitchen floor to your grandparents, you know, like in their rocking chair, you know, just rocking back and forth like oh, Exactly. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> and so Don Juan, your producer, he's worked with some really big names. In yeah, the hip hop industry. I, absolutely. I mean in the music industry period. Yeah. Um, he's um he's He's not very boastful about what he does. Uh, he's interesting. He's a uh, a background guy, a mm -hmm. family oriented guy, a very serious guy when it comes to it. But he's had accolades that you know um, that I'm just basically flabbergasted that he saw that saw something in me right. and, and wanted to work with me. So like I me, mean, he's worked with you know Michael Jackson, uh, LL Cool J, um, yeah, uh, Yolanda Adams, um, the. The, the cool thing with um, Yolanda Adams, um, there's a, in the movie Honey, yeah. um, the last song of the, you know, that I Believe song where, you know, the uh -huh. little kid is on, on the rolling <laughs> roller skate, on the, the sneakers with the roller skates. Um, so that's one of my favorite songs out of any movie, you know, that has a soundtrack. Wow. And Don Juan produced that song. Oh my and, God. And when he was introduced to me, it would, it just clicked. I was like, Yep, I was like, <laughs> sign me up. That's it. I exactly. Like, it's it's time. So um, that so yeah, it's uh, he's worked with with everyone. I mean, from being Flo Rida's music director to um, you know, being you know working for Doc Child with uh, with Rodney Jerkins. I, I'm just blessed to be able to you know even have him you know pay me attention. Exactly. So who are your influences? Uh, everyone. I mean, everyone. I, I I love music. Um. Uh, I encourage everyone, if you haven't embraced music as a whole, um, talk to somebody and ask them what their favorite song is and why, because it's a, and cause music is just a great thing to build off of. But my, yeah. ins my inspirations, you know, range from, you know, music from the 1920s uh, through the, you know, through the doo-wop era, through the 50s, uh, I was huge on 60s, you know, um, psychedelic music and the hippie movement. Uh, love the Beatles, you know, they're, they're my yeah. favorite, you know, Sir Paul, you know, holla at me, and I will, let's do a <laughs> song together, um, and uh, I like the disco era, but my uh, my main, you know, uh, thing, being from Staten Island, obviously, Wu-Tang played a big factor into it, so it's like, when you hear, um, and plus I grew up in the New York club scene, so right. when you hear all of that, the music, you can kind of see where it goes. It's not kind of all over the place, it is, but it's put together because that's where my musical inspirations come from. It's okay. kind of from here, from here, from here, from here. That's why we kind of carved out our own little niche and, you know, hopefully everyone gets it. Now, New York is a very big scene for music, especially in hip-hop. How exactly, you're from Staten Island, how was it growing up musically in Staten Island? I mean, it was it was Wu Tang. That was Wu -Tang. That, it was that was really it. Um, Staten Island. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like uh, we had uh, we had Biggie. We did have Tupac. But it's like when it comes to what came out of Staten Island, it was really all about Wu Tang for you know the better half of like three decades. Right. So um, you know they reigned supreme. You know for you know so many years. But um, it also drove an entire culture. You know of hip hop worldwide which is a great thing like I mean they'll you know forever be embedded you know as legends you know in hip-hop you know as, exactly. the, as the the biggest super group ever to touch you know the microphone so it was a it, it was pretty cool coming up in Staten Island and you know when and we go to different boroughs it was like oh yeah you know we're from, we're from Shaolin you know like right. you know? <laughs> so that, that's just how it was back in the day so it, it was a cool time because we had you know, we considered it, you know, phenomenal music because absolutely it was from, you know, our peoples. Yeah. And so when you're, you grew up around when hip hop was like legendary. Absolutely. Where DMX, Jay-Z, Biggie, that whole legendary group. So, what it, dogs at? <laughs> so exactly. How do you feel about hip hop now? Well, Fetty uh, Wap. I mean, I, uh, yeah, baby. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I love, I love Fetty. You know, shout out to Jersey, shout out to Patterson, yeah. Fetty Wap, and, and the whole, uh, you know, the whole clique. You know, of Remy Boys, uh, they, they doing it. Like they I mean, are, like Fetty, they really are. Um, I, 
I actually, I like, I like it. It's, I like it's, him too. It's entertaining. It's not the traditional rap that you would that you'd be expecting to hear. Exactly. You know, but it it paints its own picture, and just like any artist, you know, if you go into like an art museum, there's going to be you know that one painting that looks like somebody just took paint and threw it against the wall, <laughs> but someone's going to make that's the most beautiful impression you know that's out there. So exactly. Uh, but. Uh, Shout out to Fetty Wap, you know. Shout out to you know all the people coming up. Um, you know, I really, uh, I like, um, I really like that new, uh, you know, Chad B record uh, that's out. Uh, uh, it's called In My Zone. I'll be on the lookout for that. And, okay. Um, and I, I really like Dave East too, uh, out of Harlem. Uh, he got a song called Numb that um, uh, the guy who shot my video, uh, Joe Kima, for the program, just shot his video. And um, the, I, I like people on the come up that are really doing it, you know, and you know moving people so I really like hip-hop now you know today I mean music is music and however you embrace it you embrace it so I, I like everything you know until it like doesn't have any beat and I can't like even bop my head to it and, um, <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie some of the stuff the you know the I mean, are you talking about future I, I don't know I, don't I, talk I, about future everybody keeps saying no one can understand what future is saying but <laughs> uh, I mean listen uh, um, People respect him, so I respect him. But yeah. there's certain songs I don't know if it's Future that's singing or Amigos or, or uh, uh, the same thing like Snoop. You know, Snoop right. said the same thing. He was like, I don't know what they say. Like, I did it, did it, did it. So I, I like to be. I'm from a, an era where I like to hear what's going on. You know, okay. and don't disguise it so much. You know, behind all of the effects and that you know laid back. You know, uh, you know, sir. You know, swagger. You know, where you can't understand a mumbling word that people are saying <laughs> the, the beats are dope you know yeah. and, and uh, when Drake comes on you know it's a uh, you know I can hear and understand what he's saying so I want to exactly. so it's like you have something to say I want to hear what you have to say so I don't know which artist you know it is that uh you know has this a couple of songs <laughs> with those flows where I just can't understand what they're saying but I'd like to be able to but other than that I love hip-hop nowadays and uh, you know I can't wait to see what the future has to hold for hip-hop that's gonna be very interesting just to see the evolution of hip-hop because oh, yeah. now back when what back in the late the 80s and 90s hip-hop was not mainstream no. it was not a crossover genre of music where you would see artists like Kendrick Lamar collaborating with Taylor Swift no definitely not I mean the I mean you had a couple of you know uh, bridge gap bridge gap uh, people with uh, Aerosmith and Run DMC. Right. But um, but no, you would never see that that big of a cross. I, I think yeah. actually, hey, truth, I think it was Eminem that actually set the bar when he did when he did the track uh, when he did the performance with Elton John. So yeah. um, that allowed that broke the hip hop barrier right yeah. there and allowed people to actually collaborate with artists that they, you know wouldn't even think to do you know and you mm -hmm. have collaborations like you have Paul McCartney and Kanye you know right. now so uh, I mean it's it, it's great then you have Justin Bieber and Luda yeah you know I mean exactly totally two ends of the spectrum and it makes for good music so a hit is a hit is a hit so collaborate go outside your genre artists that I love that are out there and artists that all the people that are listening love go out there and challenge yourself to Cross the genres, you know, and make a dope song with someone else. I think Justin Timberlake just came out with a country song. I don't know if that's a hoax or not. <laughs> exactly. But, but more power to him, you know. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and the more creative we can get with music is the more creative that we can challenge ourselves as artists to do. Yeah, and I feel like you have really challenged yourself because I know before the interview you were talking about how you was a freestyle rapper, and now to see you from freestyling battle rap to real, like, rooted hip-hop going into pop music, I mean, that's a huge step. I mean, I'd say hip hop, you know, built the foundation for a lot of people, you know, yeah. and um, it wasn't like something that I did, it was something that I lived. So hip hop is, you know, um, anyone could throw on a pair of baggy jeans, take the hat, throw <laughs> it backwards, you know, and pick up some swagger. But it's like if you, exactly. really, if you really lived it, like I was a break dancer for years, you know, I hung out with a lot of graffiti writers, you know, the, the whole hip hop movement was laid the foundation for me musically wow. to basically build on, to do what I want to do. So, exactly. it was, so it was a state of mind. It's a New York state of mind, you know, and mm -hmm. hip hop was just so prevalent in everyday life that that's just how it was. So, so that laid the foundation. Now I'm a, you know, now I like to make people dance, and I have some, you know, conscious lyrics that you hear on top of it. So that's what basically sculpted me into the artist that you see today. Okay, can you get more into your conscious lyrics? Okay, like, um, 
what I mean by conscious lyrics is not so much uh, a message of like um, you know like uh, you know um, you know not for the death penalty or you know or equal rights. Uh, what I mean right. by what I mean by that is I make you basically hear what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and it is a, it's a metaphorical undertone. So it almost makes you access your subconscious in order to basically process them. So, wow. um, in other words, so there's a um, an, another interviewer <laughs> asked me about this line that they uh, you know picked up and they said um, uh, in, in uh, my song uh, Party Started that we just listened to. It's uh, I never drink and drive because I might spill my drink. <laughs> you know, and they're like this. They're like, oh, okay, we see how you did that. You know, over right. there. And then um, there's another line where I say. Um, Batman to you jokers, cause you're a girl I'm robbing. So it's like I take all the, you know, characters. So what I mean by conscious, you know, lyrics is I basically make you think, you know, of it. And it's like, it just sneaks in there, but I'm telling you at face value exactly what it is, but it's up for you to process it, though. So it's not just shake your booty, you know, and listen to the chorus. It's like, also I got some stuff to say during the, during the verses as well. Interesting. So now let's talk about your thought process for time of my life. I know that, you know, you're saying that you're a party guy, you want people to move. That was the main part of the record. Right. But what 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 really got you what was it when you put the do you write do you write your lyrics or yeah. do you just write off your head like Jay Z? <laughs> well, I mean um me, I, I like to be able to take my time okay. to put my words into perspective correctly. Mm -hmm. Um there's a lot of people that uh, I could do it like that. I feel that my listening audience and my team deserves my best and I think that my best would be when I take the time to actually put it down on paper uh, I don't I don't write with my phone I right. still am old school with a pen and a paper no, um, so I feel that to be able to uh, to write the lyrics you know um, and be able to get my message across is is probably the most the most important thing rather mm -hmm. than um, you know just throwing some you know nonsense on uh, on you know records and making it you know just rhyme and hopefully it makes sense to somebody in some sort of introspective type of way exactly. so so that, that's kind of how I do it interesting and so this is your second this is, this is my debut album your debut album Awesome. So what made you, you've been rapping for a long time, what made you now decide to put an album out? Um, it was really Don Juan that, uh, you know, he saw one of my videos and heard one of my songs um, uh, when I was just, you know, basically doing some, I, I was doing, you know, I was still doing music, but he, right. he said that we can tweak this and we can go a different route with this. He said, I think that we can really make people move. I like the way your lyrical ability transcends over the record. So... Why don't you try this? And then Interesting. all of a sudden, all year was created the next day. Hmm. So, and the album's name, uh, to touch back on your, your question before, yeah. um, the reason why we call it the time of my life is because this really is the time of my life that I'm having where I'm having the most fun. And I'm, I'm putting out the best product that I can possibly imagine. And everyone appreciates it. So it's something that, um, you know, that that my enemy could appreciate even if he hates me and the person that loves me will you know appreciate it even more so i'm i'm really i'm having the time of my life while i'm doing this and until it stops being fun you're gonna you know see me with all this intensity and energy and <laughs> in my performance it you know it happens i'll try to reach everyone you know from the stage and i encourage everyone have the time of your life because you only get one go around at this We're, uh, yeah i pride myself on this statement we are only here for a small cup of coffee i'm just trying to drink it while it's hot Oh my gosh, that was, oh my gosh, that was like the dopest thing you could have said. I appreciate <laughs> it. Okay, so we're going to get back into your music, All oh, Yes, next. Again, this is Joe Paul, you guys, you're listening to on MVL Radio. Make sure you add me at I am Joe Paul. Okay. Right, cool. So we'll finish up. Um, talk more. Is there anything else you want to reach, touch on? Um, let me ask, uh, like, um, <clears throat> uh, where, where can they find your music? Uh, okay. How can they get in touch with you? Where can they find the album? Okay. You know, stuff like that. I mean, unless there's some, um, you're the, you're the, the, the person that has to do it. Um, usually that's how it, it kind of, um, 
how it'll segue out, you know, a good okay. segue out. Um, yeah. But if there's something That's you want to That's what I usually do. No, I was going to talk about your performances. Okay. Um, do you have anything coming up or? Hmm. I know that I'm going to Miami and okay. we have a couple things going on You there. look like you would be Miami turning up. Oh, I want to be in Miami. This so is, bad. this is like your, your music, your style is like literally, I feel like I haven't been to my, I, I've been in Disney World, but like, Orlando? yeah. Orlando, Orlando. Miami is very, very similar. Yeah. So, I mean, Orlando's, Orlando's like Miami people, just a little more bougie. That's so. <laughs> In Orlando. Yeah. I can see Miami, that. It it's, seemed it, like Miami, it. Miami is just turning for two things. Yeah. It is. It's just... It's Miami. It's, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Pitbull, like, carved out that whole... That whole that's market. That's the Pitbull, in a way. Because the Pitbull. I think that's what it is. When I put out a... I put out a video on... Um, on on Worst Life Hip Hop, and I said that, you know, like, this is the product of what Vin Diesel and Pitbull's love child would look like. It was so funny. <laughs> But I'll embrace it though. I mean, you know, that's just how it is. Yeah. yeah. I just I like the upbeat tempos. It's easier to it's really easy to sell to the club. Like if you go to a club owner, you're like like my manager goes up to a club owner, he's like, oh, yeah, I got an artist, you know, that wants to perform you. Oh, what type of music? Hip hop. Next. But if he said, oh, he does pop dance music. Oh really? Oh well, well can I hear something? You know. Uh, right. I mean, they always. Th I mean, they think they cash it in on like the uh, like the next Justin Bieber or something like mm -hmm. that. Which you know, think like that. Good. You know, like try and you know help it out over there. But uh, performances. Um, I'm going to Miami. I'm going to Vegas, and I'm going to LA. And we got a lot of legwork to do. I do a lot of in studio performances. Uh, next Thursday on KRP TV, uh, I have um I have a performance, and then over the weekend I'm doing a private party. We do a lot. Of Private parties too. So okay. I do hosting, you know, do some clubs. And That's awesome. I'm everywhere. It's That's awesome. like I literally try and get my face everywhere. Like I was at the core DJ event last week. You know, performing at Pasha, you know, like a couple months back. I was doing horse Highline Ballroom. Right. I, mean, I don't know if you know what these, these clubs are. I mean, all the top of New York City clubs. You okay. Know New York City? I do. No, actually, I don't. I'm like more in White Plains over here okay. in this area. When I was in the city, because I'm 21, I just turned 21 back in May. Okay. But when I did, <laughs> you're legal. Thank you. I know I'm legal. But so when we did, when my friend, up. you could fight for our country and die for like, for like three whole years, but you can't have a drink please. or gamble. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> you could you could fire a gun and kill people, but you can't drink. Yeah. We should talk about that. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, no. Okay, but yeah, so I went to the VIP room for my birthday. VIP room. Okay. No, VIP's dope. It is. It was really fun. We went, I forgot the other club we were trying to go to. I know the VIP room we were at. It was really fun. You probably going to like the Gansport or uh, Amnesia? I have no idea. Amnesia was dope. I don't even know if it's still open. <laughs> Right now, it is time to party with Joe Paul. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, Joe, you were just talking about you're going to be in Miami. Yes. Coming up, which is going to be one of your next performances. Yeah, we're, uh, we're basically, we're doing a, like a, we call it like a round robin. Because okay. we're going to be basically floating from Miami, L.A., and Las Vegas, and New York, and then basically back around. So, it's like we're going to be touching all the clubs and all the venues we have a lot of radio stations that we have uh that we've been asked to appear at so we're going to actually tour and we're going to go on tour for the radio stations and for all the djs that want us to perform at their clubs so okay. um set dates uh i know next week we have a uh, krp tv um you know uh, in manhattan and then from there uh i think we're going to be doing um uh, I forgot the name of the club. Uh, it's on Collins. I know that in Miami. I just can't remember the name of it. Uh -huh. But um, as soon as uh, I get the information and the itinerary from my manager, I will shout it out on my social media, which brings me to everybody. Go to Instagram. Go to Twitter. Go to Facebook. Add me at at I am Joe Paul. And if you guys have iTunes, make sure you purchase my record called Time of My Life. Write a review, even if it stinks. I would love to know your opinion. <laughs> but don't just put, oh, it's whack. I want to know why. You better get deep with it because you can't just say it's whack without putting a reason behind it. So don't be an internet tough guy without actually explaining yourself. I like that. I like that. So one thing with Joe Paul, if you guys were sitting, if you guys are in the station with me right now, you will see that not only does he have his, not only does he have his dope shades on right now, but he looks just like Pitbull. 
Or he reminds me of Pitbull. I'm better looking than Pitbull. Come on. He's like he's better looking than Pitbull. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Darling. And so, okay, and also, too, you were saying that you do club appearances. Yeah, I mean, I do some hosting uh, at uh, a couple different clubs. I mean, when... um. The, when the crowd really wants to get turned up and the club owners want to get, you know, the party started, yeah. they, they know they can call Joe Paul and, you know, I get the party started all the time. You know, I, I believe it. I mean, they want me to put, <laughs> I usually perform, uh, you know, a couple of my records or, and then I'll throw my remix on, which uh, was produced by Don Juan and DJ Steel, which that one gets the, the clubs turned up every time. Oh That's like gosh. an EDM in your face. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you not be from Jersey, but you're going to be fist pumping all all <laughs> night to that song. But um, yeah, uh, I do uh, a lot of performances. I like to really reach my fans, you know, as, as much as I can. Um, and I'm not shy to do small venues either. I like sometimes uh, a private intimate setting, you know, with like, you know, a room full of like 25 people that are listening attentively, you know, to what I'm saying, as opposed to the mega stadium with like, you know, 2,500, 25,000 people screaming my name. That's, that's more fun because I, can, cause I, build, off, cause I build off the energy, that energy. but, um, but I build off, you know, the, the local energy as well. So I'm not sure I'll do, I'll do any venue. If, uh, if the terms are right, then I'll do it all night. Very interesting. You are very not a shy person. You are like, literally I am. I, I am Joe Paul. I That's am it. Joe Paul. I'm here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to get the party started and have the time of your life. That's what I like. And so also, too, I wanted to know more about, in your performances, what exactly, what is, can you explain to me, what is that relation with your audience? What is it that you want your audience to leave when they leave the stadium or from being the audience at that moment seeing Joe Paul on stage? Well, one, I want, uh, obviously, I want the females to be like, oh, my God, he was so hot. Uh, <laughs> Is that why you started rapping? Is it, was it because? No, listen, uh, <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a message to, to say, I mean, listen, we all have our own life experiences. Right. And we all, you know, um, tell them in a certain way. I just chose music as a platform for me to tell my story. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I want my fans to, you know, leave entertained. Like, I want them saying, you know what, like, it was such great music, and, you know, he made eye contact with the entire crowd, and, you know, the stage presence that he had, you know, I really felt the passion in his music, and it was great, and I can't wait to put it on in the car and, you know, start singing along to it. So I want, most of all, I want them to have a good time, because, you know, there's, there's so much, you know, negative crap going on, you know, and rest in peace to all the victims in Paris. Uh, I mean, we should have addressed yeah. that earlier. You know, um, everybody, you know, go to the GoFundMe accounts and, you know, like pledge your donations and make sure that we can, you know, you know, really help the people out there in Paris that are really suffering right now. But um, I want people to have a good time. That's Absolutely. it. I want, I, want to, I want you to be able to smile <laughs> easier in the morning because of me. I love that. Okay, so let's have some fun right now. So I want to know, what was one of the best parties that you've been to that you did something really crazy. Think back to your, if you have to okay. go back to when you well, were 21. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I, I, I can't which, is only, which is only like last week, so, you know. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not going to say when I jumped on top of the bar. And did, no, I can't tell. I can't tell. Well, you jumped on top of the bar. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> they, um, so they didn't have a stage at this place, but they wanted me to perform. And there, okay. was, and there was no place to perform. And I wasn't going to... Now, I'm kind of short, you know, like, I mean, uh, I know I might look, you know, like, you know, at least like I'm tall, but I'm really not. I'm vertically right. challenged to the, <laughs> to the <laughs> negative 10th degree. <laughs> but, um, so I was like... I was like, I just jumped out on the bar. I had the DJ throw me the microphone, and boom, we hit the record right there. And I performed for the whole crowd right on the mic, right on the on the bar, which was literally like maybe 12 inches wide. Those but, bars are small. Yeah, most bars. So yeah. I'm literally shaking my tush, you know, as best as I could to to interact with them because if I took one step, I'd be stepping on the guy's drink. If I took a step to the left, I'd be stepping on the ashtray, you know, of the woman's uh, smoking her, her cigarette. Because it was an outdoor, you know, cabana type of party. So that was the, that's probably one of the craziest things that I did. Um, or, um, let's see, we did, we did a couple of yacht parties over the summer where, you know, during the. I wish I was there. Where during the, I, I wish you went to. Uh, I had just turned 21. Oh, you know what you know, it would be to be turned next 21. Summer, <laughs> next summer, it's on. It's okay. on. I would tell all the listeners right now, we are snatching her away. She's coming to a Joe Paul party. She might not come back, though. Um, 
But uh, so right in the middle of the of the performance, I saw that there was a tube, uh, you know, down in the water, and I, so with the microphone, and this was kind of risky because microphones do get kind of expensive. But it was right. really all for you know the moment. So it wasn't like a high jump, but. As the song ended, you know, um, at the song Time of My Life, it, it finished up, you know, we're going to make it hot, ex ignite like fire, dynamite, explosion. And I literally just jumped off, jumped off the yacht, landed on the tube, held the microphone up. I mean, I was fully submerged, but the microphone actually stayed above the water. So, oh my God. so that was a, that was a cool, crazy moment. And, um... <laughs> You know, and so they appreciated it, but, um, you know, it, it kind of stopped the party there, but, you know, it, sometimes it's just got, it just has to get done. Oh, my gosh. See what happens with Joe Paul, a little bit of alcohol and, you know, so a nice, you know, comfortable yacht setting with girls dancing all over the place. <laughs> That's just what happens. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so where can we all find you again? Can you say your social media yes, out for us? Everyone can find me at I am Joe Paul. That's on all social networks. That's Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Reverb Nation, uh, YouTube. Uh, make sure you like all of my videos. Make sure you like all of my pictures. You know, I don't care. You can spam me. I'll spam you back. Uh, I'm one of the artists that actually follows back if you're interactive. He will. I, I will follow back. He will back. follow back. I'm not, and, and, I, and a week later, you won't see me. You know, that when you look at your app and you're like, oh, who deleted me? Oh, Joe Paul. No, that won't be me unless you don't interact, you know, with me. So I like to get very one-on-one -on -one with my fans. Uh, I also have a website. It's at I am jo well, I'm sorry, uh, I am Joe Paul dot com. And okay. if you want, you just choose whichever network you want, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Follow me on that. That's good enough. Let me know what you think of my music, even if it's bad. I love it. I love it. Okay, thank you so much, Joe Paul, for coming out thank tonight. Thank you for having me. I really, I really appreciate you giving you know artists <laughs> a platform to do their thing. And um, you know, you did excellent. I mean, I hope that you know uh, a major station you know in the future picks you up because you know you uh, you have a great presence. Oh on my the god! I'm just trying to get invited. Oh back. my god! You will be invited back for saying thank that. You, thank I you so it. much. Purchase New York. I love y'all. And again, this is.